We do. It's good. All right, it says for R1 ISP's S000 interface, configure the highest usable address on the existing WAN subnet. Okay, let's take a look at the existing WAN subnet. Okay, that's the fifth subnet. And going back to the uh, variable length subnet mass calculator, go to the fifth subnet. And we're going to assign the highest usable to S000 of R1. So that's 172.16.3.98. And the subnet mask is uh, 255.255.255.252. We'll go ahead and assign the address to S000. Turn on the interface. 172.16.3.98. Good to go there. All right, R2 Central's S000 interface will use the lowest usable address on the existing WAN subnet. This is the lowest usable. Now let's complete the table. And that's going to assign the lowest usable to S000. Okay, the subnet mask is here. The subnet mask for the fifth subnet is here. Okay, let's go ahead and assign an IP address to, to S. Zero, zero, zero. We can't do it at that this point. There's no serial interface there. So imagine later in the instructions will be directed to install a serial interface or interfaces. But at least we have the uh, table configured and we know the appropriate IP address and subnet mass assigned to that interface at a later time. Okay, for our centrals, F00, we'll use the highest usable address on the existing student LAN. Okay, the existing student LAN is here. That's the first subnet. You see that's the existing student LAN. Okay. So F000. Get the highest usable. So we'll go to the first subnet, and the highest usable is here. One seven two dot sixteen dot one dot two fifty four, and the appropriate subnet mask is here. 255.255.254.0. Let's go ahead and assign the IP address to the interface. Turn on the interface.
All right, for PCs 1A, 1B, use the first two IP addresses, the two lowest usable. On the existing student land, the two lowest usable would be a 1 and 2. So dot 1 and dot 2. Okay, be mindful of the zero in the third octet. This is actually, we'll actually be assigning 0 0.1 and 0 0.2. Appropriate subnet mask. Since these uh, PCs are connected to um, R2, and R2 is the default gateway, and in particular we're talking about F0 slash 0, so those PCs will use the same subnet mask as F00. This will be a dot two. All right, let's go ahead and configure the PCs. All right, what's the appropriate IP address for this particular PC? PC1A. One seventy two sixteen zero dot one subnet mask Oh the default gateway. We set that R two F zero zero is the default gateway. We'll go ahead and uh, update our table. Okay, at this point, we don't have green lights, and I'm not sure whether or not uh, we'll address that issue in the instructions at a later point. But let's do a little troubleshooting to determine why we don't have a green light. Looks like F0 slash 1 on the switch leads to PC1A, so let's uh, click the switch. Well, we see that the hover over tells us that F0 slash 1 is down. So let's click the switch, go to the config tab, we click F0 1. Okay. All right, we see F0 1 is on, so that's good. That's good. Let's take a look at the PC. Go to the fast Ethernet port, and it's not on. So I'll turn it on, and we get a green light. I'll go ahead and uh, configure PC1B. Turn on the interface. Go to the desktop, and uh, assign the appropriate values. The default gateway address, 172.16.1.0.1. Okay. 
254. Okay, well, let's do a connectivity test at this point. We'll go ahead and ping from 1B to 1A. Good. Let's get, I'm going to go ahead and ping the default gateway. The default gateway address is 1.254. Good. So we have connectivity between all of the devices on the existing uh, student LAN. Now it's, it's a good idea to do a connectivity test as you configure devices. So if uh, for some reason you run into problems later on, you'll know at what point you lost connectivity and it will help you in terms of isolating the problem. All right, additional under additional planning for PCs 1A, 1B, in addition to IP configuration, we need to configure them to use DNS services. So what's going to be the DNS server? Oh, well, for the server enable DNS services, use the domain name eagle server or eagle hyphen server dot example dot com and enable HTTP services. Okay. So we know the server is going to be the DNS server and also the HTTP server. So we need to find the IP address of the server. And let's go back to our table. You can see the Eagle server IP address is here. So we need to uh, place the uh, DNS server IP address into uh, the PCs. Okay. And the DNS server at IP address is 172.16.3.61. We'll go to 1A, do the same thing. 172.16.3.61. All right, for the server-enabled DNS services, let's take care of that. Let's click the server, and under the config tab, we'll select DNS. We'll turn it on, and we're told to use the domain name Eagle. So the domain name is Eagle hyphen server dot example 